Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining Proverbs Guys Ministries. We have a very special guest, our favorite creationist, Dr. Hoven in the house. Doc, you want to give us a plug for your channel and tell everybody where they can find you at? Well, thank you, sir. Good to be with you. Uh, my name's Kent Hoven. Let's see. I live in Lenox, Alabama, right north of Pensacola, 70 miles, Pensacola, Florida. And we have uh, a ministry here called Dinosaur Adventureland. It's all free. It's all fun. The kids go crazy here. It's uh, 140 acres and 70, 17 uh, lakes and ponds, fishing, boating, science center that's 12,000 square feet of cool stuff. Probably the best taxidermy collection in Alabama, maybe in, <laughs> maybe in several states. Okay, it's unreal the stuff God, God's provided here. Yeah, it's an old-fashioned, independent, temperamental, fundamental, right-wing, radical, chicken-eating Baptist church, Genesis Baptist Church. They can get us on Genesis Baptist Church channel on YouTube and on uh, Kent Hovind Official on Facebook, TikTok, a whole bunch of places. Just go to our website, drdino.com, and you can see all the list of all the places where we where we put out we put out lots of videos, I think over 25 million of them now, in 42 languages, defending the Bible as being scientifically accurate. God said he made everything in six days. Everything. That would mean dinosaurs lived with man. So we teach a lot on dinosaurs here. But yeah, we're glad to have you. Come visit. It's all free. we got cabinets. We'll put you up in. After two days, we'll give you a hammer or a shovel, put you to work. <laughs> Great. All right. So the topic tonight, we're going to be going back and doing some post-debate review that uh, actually wasn't supposed to be a debate against Steven Anderson. It was supposed to be a friendly sit down and it completely fell apart. What happened? I thought I was completely blindsided. I preached at his church. Uh, he's a good preacher, Baptist preacher. And uh, I preached at his church before and his people loved my videos and the, a lot of my material still circulate around his church. I was really shocked, I guess, A, at his how he handled the thing, and B, what he was upset about. Uh, totally unnecessary. I think it was sad. But anyway. In my opinion, I'm wondering if it wasn't a way for him to become relevant again. He's been banned from just about every country around the world because he's a hate preacher. And I'm thinking that maybe he thought somehow the only way to get back in people's good graces was to take a swipe at the great Kent Hovind. What do you think? I, I can't be the judge of that. It sounds like a, a logical possibility, but God be the judge of that. I can't see his heart. <laughs> All right. Well, he had several disagreements with you. I don't want to get in uh, real deep to the moon disagreement, but I do want you to touch on that because I think the version of history that he portrays is a very perverted one when it comes to an imperfect world our God would create. And I like how you defended that God made it perfect. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I was shocked to hear him start teaching. Apparently, he's starting a new movement thinking, well, God made the earth to look old. No, God made the world perfect. It's the, the flood destroyed the world, and man's sin has destroyed the world, but God made a perfect world. But he says, like the craters on the moon was one thing he talked about. I got the moon globe here. Thank you. Uh, the uh, moon uh, has craters on one side that are much bigger than the craters on the other side. And I, I, in my, I say, look, one of the most logical options I can see is when the fountains of the deep broke open during the flood, the crust of the earth bur burst open. They, the, say, say there was 10 miles of rock on top of the water underneath. There was water in the crust of the earth. I cover that in great detail in video number two, all the Bible verses about how God created the earth uh, on top of the water. What's now, in the, what's now on top of the earth, our oceans, used to be in the crust. Well, God made the earth to be habitable. I think you could probably live anywhere in the world for the first 1,600 years from the creation till the flood. And the, the water that burst forth would have had 30 tons per square inch of pressure on it from, six, from 10 miles of rock. That would launch things off, off the surface of the earth. I think rocks were launched out from the cracking of the crust and the weight of all that rock uh, shooting stuff up. Well, just a theory. That's one explanation for those. Some of those came up and hit the moon, which is why the direct hit would have bigger craters. So the stuff that flew on past and came back by moon's gravity, which is much weaker, would have littler craters. The back side of the moon has small craters. The front side has big craters. It's just a fact of science. Now, what caused it? I don't know. It's my theory that I think the fountains of the deep did that breaking open. He really, he said God made the moon with craters. I don't believe that. He said God made Adam with a belly button. I don't believe that for a second. But he, he can believe that if he wants. I don't know how you're going to prove such a thing until we get to heaven. But I think the whole concept of Creating the earth to look old is a compromise to try to get somebody in to believe you who, who is an evolutionist or atheist. 
a lot of the people who get mad at me and leave our ministry for some reason, they go to the atheist channels right away. That says something. Louder. Sir, if it, if it <laughs> falls, it will, it will become flat. So uh, don't drop it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to <laughs> so Stephen made a lot of bizarre claims. The belly button one was the weirdest. I'm not quite sure how Stephen Anderson could have, or, uh, how Adam could have a belly button since he wasn't born. But that was the the first weird claim he made. The other weird claim he made was referring to when he attacked your timeline, and he claimed that the children of Israel were slaves in Egypt for over 450 years. And the only way I can justify the mistake he made is that he's counting them in slavery from the time they first arrived in Egypt. But that would make that would make Joseph a slave and second in command of all of Egypt. I find that bizarre, don't you? Well, yeah, and I, I did some slides on that. How long were they in Egypt? Uh, my timeline is exactly correct. His is wrong. OK, the, many people have, uh, you know, the, was it 430 years? Contradictions in the Bible. Here it is. Uh, there, okay. Oh, DV, put my slides back up there, brother. How long were they in Egypt? Atheists love to pick on this and say there's a contradiction in the Bible. Let me get have to bend way over here, brother. Okay. No, there's no contradiction. Was it 215 or 400 or 430? And he made a big deal out of that that my timeline is wrong. People have this, this has been a question people have answered hundreds of times for the last hundreds of years, okay? Was it only 215? Was it 400? Was it 430? There's a great article on answers in Genesis about that. How long were they in Egypt? See, it takes lots of different ingredients to go in to make a cake, okay? So let's look at all the different factors on, in this supposed contradiction. We know from the dates given in the Bible how old Adam was when he was born, Genesis chapter 5, you can get my chart. And the dates, you can simply add them up. The Bible dates add up to the earth being created about 6,000 years ago, 4,000 BC. Then we know that God called Abraham, Abram, and changed his name to Abraham. We know the date of that was about 2,000 BC. God called him. So God said to Abram, I know you're a stranger in a, a land that's not, they're going to be, a, your, your children are going to be a, in a stranger in a land that's not theirs, your seed. And they shall afflict them 400 years. Well, the, for the first 30 years, they weren't afflicted. Joseph invited his family to come down and live with them. And Joseph was the vice Pharaoh. He fed them and took care of them and all that stuff. So for 30 years, they were not afflicted. For 400 years, they were. So one verse says 430, one verse says 400, well, they're both right. They were in Egypt for 430 years, but they were afflicted for 400 years. I don't understand why anybody thinks that's a contradiction. They shall entreat them evil for 400 years. And about the fourth generation. So uh, it says, I say this, the covenant, the land was 430 years. Okay. And they claim it's a contradiction. And he wants to change what people have already settled hundreds of times. They've done all the math on this and say, look, they were in Egypt for 430 years, but they were afflicted for 400. It's not a contradiction at all. I don't know what he's trying to do, but uh, so they were in Egypt 430 years. Doesn't say they were afflicted for 430 years. They were in Egypt. Ishmael, the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, mocked Isaac. That starts the calendar right there for the affliction of the children of Israel. Because apparently, Abraham was an old man when uh, Ishmael was born because his wife said, I can't have children marry my servant girl, Hagar, the Egyptian. So he had a e half Egyptian child, Ishmael. Then years later had Isaac and Sarah was apparently still nursing Isaac at five years old. And some countries do that. Nurse the babies up till they're four or five. I guess saves on the grocery bill. But uh, And so <laughs> the son Hagar was mocking him. Genesis 21 talks about that, Galatians 4, etc. So the promise was 430 years before the law was given. His, his argument that my timeline is wrong, my first place, it, I don't think I'm wrong. I think I'm right on that. And it's not worth fighting or splitting the church over. I, I, I was baffled by the whole thing. So I went through the other night on my, my show. What show was that I did, brother? The night after that supposed debate. But many people, there's just a lot of Google how long were they in Egypt? Now the atheists make a big deal out of it because they don't, they don't, they don't want there to, be, they want there to be a contradiction. Of From the call of Abraham, this is my timeline. He's objecting to, and Abraham. Oh, there we go. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. My timeline's right. Not going to change it. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I agree uh, with you, Doc. 
Given me, I, um, the thing uh, for me, uh, uh, before I, I speak, uh, let me just say that I, I am one of those that actually love Steven Anderson. And I was very surprised. Uh, there's a lot of people that call him a hate preacher, um, but uh, I have been helped a lot by him. Yeah, and um, he has given uh, some very good lectures. Um, he has studied the Bible and giving the correct message of the Bible. He's preaching the right gospel. But um, there are some things uh, that um, if you are trying to compensate for things that you don't want to look into, like uh, carbon dating not actually working, and you are trying to compensate for that uh, by saying that the earth was created old, then you are falling in a trap, which is you are creating another God, which is uh, playing tricks on us. Um, so um, the literal six day creation is a better explanation. And here is where my problem comes in. You can say, just as you said, just as we heard Kent Hovind say here right now, without any influence from anyone, that this is my view, it's not worth fighting over it, you can have another view, and it's another thing to call someone who is on the same side and on the same camp with you, call him a charlatan and say that what you are doing is wrong and it's hurting the ministry. Now that is a direct attack. And that's where I felt very disappointed because uh, we are supposed to use our ammunition to the enemy and the enemy is the lies. Now, if we have some disagreements among each other, we can't, I have disagreements with Stephen. Um, a lot of people uh, find different Bibles uh, to be better, but if, uh, if one of them believes in the King James strongly, he will not attack the other person and say, you are a danger to Christianity you are evil like uh that is a thin line which i got very surprised that uh stephen anderson didn't give you the respect that you should uh, have for attacking every aspect of evolution and proving to people like me that i've been taught lies all my life because i went to the university and i got myself a degree and i want to throw it in the garbage because everything they taught me was lies and i needed to find ken hovind so in order to arrive to Jesus, there was like a gap which was created by universities. So you cannot go out there and just say you are uh, what you are doing. Uh, your six day creation is hurting. Um, so I'll leave it to that because it was already five minutes. Uh, it, it was for me a disappointment. I felt very sad that day. I hope he realizes that we all have different views. Uh, and we shouldn't be attacking each other for our views. We will be in heaven one day, and what matters is to make it there. If we keep attacking each other because they have a different view, then we are disrespecting God's greatest commandment, which is to love each other as ourselves. So by would you like to have yourself attacked like that? Be called a charlatan and be called that uh, your preaching is false and you are a false preacher? So why do you do this to a brother of yours? If you don't, then we're going to meet in heaven and we're going to laugh about it. Hey, you thought on, of six days, I thought of an old earth. Ha, ha, ha. So I'll leave it to that for now. Okay. Steven, back All to you. All right. Well, the next one up, and that's a great point. I was very disappointed that uh, you being a pillar in the community when it comes to defending creationism, he would take swipes at you. But another bizarre claim he made was that Abraham had no connection to the children of Israel. And I find that just very fascinating since he's literally the patriarch of the children of Israel. The children of Israel are still God's chosen people. Now, they rejected their Messiah 2,000 years ago. Major mistake. And he told them the day he was going to arrive in the prophets, and he told him he would come in on a donkey. He told them, how, and they accepted him and cheered and clapped and threw their coats down. Yeah, here comes the Messiah. Three days later, they crucified him. So God said, I'm, you Jews, I'm going to take you off the olive tree, the natural branch. I'm going to graft in the wild olive branch, Romans 11. I'm going to get some fruit off the Gentiles. And we are in now what is called the age of the Gentiles. And on my chart, which I use, and which we'll continue using, whether he likes it or not, this age of the Gentiles oh, is be, from the crucifixion of Christ until 
the tribulation time, there's a 2,000 year period where God's been using the Gentiles to try to get some fruit. I'm Norwegian, I'm a Gentile. But God's not done. He's going to take us off because we're not producing much fruit either and put the Jews back in. And they are still God's chosen people. They're stubborn and rebellious and he's hard headed. And he's have to, you know, but there's, you know, they're still his people. You know, one thing that really confused me, Dr. Hoven, is that there were supposed to be two creationists on the stage that night agreeing on creationism. But Stephen took the position of evolutionist a lot more than any creationist position. And did it feel like to you that you ended up debating just another evolutionist? It did some. Yeah, I do so many programs. I can't keep them all straight in my head, but I've done 400 and uh, 352 now debates against atheists and evolutionists. And I kind of had the same feeling there. Like, I thought this was my friend. I thought this was my ally. What happened here? You know, I don't think about it anymore. It's over with. It's not something I'm dwelling on. I got plenty to do without him. And he, he's probably got a ministry he can run without me. So go plow. I'm plowing my row as straight and deep as I can. Somebody else is plowing a different row. Great. Okay. But I'm, I'm going to try to produce fruit for the master. Well, and I know when uh, when you first got released, you did a lot of preaching. You helped Stephen Anderson quite a bit. You even preached to his church. Do you have any idea, like, in his mind, what happened for you to go from friend to foe basically overnight? I was totally blindsided that night. I had no idea. He was angry at me. Apparently, he made a bunch of videos about me in his church preaching anti Kent Hovind. I, I don't watch his stuff. I don't, I don't watch all the you know how many anti Hovind videos there are. I don't take time to watch them. Abe Lincoln one time, one of his, he was getting a lot of criticism about the Civil War from his own cop cabinet and people criticizing and letters to the editor and anti-Lincoln arguments in the newspaper. One of his uh, counselors came and said, President Lincoln, you are getting so much criticism, aren't you going to stop and answer the critics? He said, sir, there's a war going on. If I took time to stop and answer the critics, that's all I would do. He said, history will determine if I did the right thing or not. Now, can you name any of the critics of Abe Lincoln? Have you ever well, heard of Abe Lincoln? Well, the South, but that's it. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever heard of Abe Lincoln? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, no, you're right. I can't, I can't think of a single critic, though. Okay. All right. So uh, you and Stephen, you both preach from the Bible. One thing I appreciate about you, though, is you have a way where you can share the truth in a blunt way, but it doesn't come off hateful. You can tell that you have love and compassion for sinners. You know, how does someone like Stephen Anderson read the same Bible that we do, but come off so hateful in his preaching? That I don't know. He's got to answer to God for that. I got to answer to God for me. So I guess the way I was raised, my dad was a Marine, World War II sergeant in the Marines, uh, only survivor of his platoon fighting the Japs. And, uh, he was such a patient, patient man. I never heard him raise, raise his voice except one time when I was 13, he was teaching me to drive the Volkswagen and I kept popping the clutch and he kept telling me, let it out slow. And finally he had enough. He said, I said, let it out slow. I did not know the man knew how to yell. He was six foot two, 220 pounds of muscle, sergeant in the Marines, World War II, and a brilliant, brilliant genius man, electrical engineer at Caterpillar Tractor Company. And I was raised to just, don't, you don't need to raise your voice. You don't need to scream and yell. You ever heard me scream and yell? Never. Okay. Right. So I it's just not. I just do it differently. I guess. I try to use logic and rationale. I was. I met my first or seven years. We were. We went to the, a Mennonite church in East Peoria, Illinois. They're a little similar to the Amish in some ways. And I like the story about the Amish guy, the or the Quaker. You know, they don't. They don't supposed to not ever get violent or not ever get angry. The Quaker said, "Sir, I would not harm thee for the world, but thou art standing where I'm about to shoot." <laughs> so, uh, so I'm, I, I guess my, my technique of like with the atheists, you know, I can stay calm under fire pretty much. And uh, I, I can sweetly and kindly tell them, you know, you're stupid. Now, one of my last questions for you, Dr. Hoven, is do you think you would be up for doing another debate with Stephen? Or do you think your time is better served focusing on actual evolutionists? I. I I want to stick on the actual evolution topic. I get offers to debate on flat earth and other topics and stuff like that. One thing, I, somebody sent me a link, and so I watched some of Steve Anderson's uh, response after after our, so I thought it was a discussion. I didn't know. I thought he was on our side. I didn't know it was a debate against him. But anyway, after that night, 
he did a show, he did a, a sermon at his church and called me uh, a, uh, what was the word he used? Uh, a charlatan? A polygamist. A polygamist. Oh. He said he's married to mul multiple women. Ah, polygamous. Okay. Well, no, Polly, you know, married to more than one. No, this no you said it right. Uh, it, uh, the voice uh, chopped off and I didn't hear the word, but polygamous, yes. And uh, yeah. I verified from the Greek that you said it correctly. <laughs> well, this is, he, he, I think when they get to that point with ad hominem attacks, they're desperately searching for something to make themselves look good and you look bad. I've got nothing to hide in my, in my relationship with my wives. I was married for a honey, virgin on my honeymoon. How many people can claim that? I would say like Jesus would say, he's without, without sin, cast the first stone. So if you want to cast stones at me, answer these questions first. Were you a virgin on your honeymoon? If not, shut up. Did you stay faithful to your wife all the time you're married? I've never touched a woman I wasn't married to. We were married for 42 years, my wife, first wife and I. When I got home from prison, she divorced me. She was afraid of the IRS. In Florida, you can't stop a divorce. It's a one-party consent. If one person wants it, they get it. I had nothing to do with it. I didn't know it was coming. I was completely blindsided. Came home from serving nine years in prison. I wrote 42 books while I was in there, or 37 books in prison, and led 100, 800 men to the Lord. I tried to serve God in prison. I thought I'm coming home and everything's going to be hunky-dory. Let's get back to work. And she divorced me. You can't stop that. So uh, I had Mary Toko on my program. Uh, I started my YouTube channel right up again. To, I want to get the gospel out. And somebody said, Brahovan, you ought to investigate her for your wife. So I'd, I'd, I'd known about her for some time, uh, her uh, anti-vaccine stand and stuff, childhoodshots.com. And I appreciated that. I talked to her. And so I had her come down to Pensacola, had her on my program. And one of the staff members said, wow, there's, there's the next Mrs. Hoven. Because my wife divorced me and my son made me pay 600 a month to rent a bedroom in my own house. Okay, And so we dated for a little while and ended up marrying her. After nine months, I thought everything was fine. We heard brand new ministry up here, nothing but mud, trying to build this place out of, out of nothing, the old gravel pit. And then she left. And uh, I could go into more detail. of it, 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 I think it was a all the financial thing, but she left. I, thought, I tried everything to get her back. Finally, I contacted the trustees of the ministry said, what do I do? They said, Brother Hoven, you didn't leave. You were faithful. File an annulment. When you have a church wedding, you, have a, you don't have to have a state divorce. Uh, you have to have a, a state, a, 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 an annulment, a church annulment. So we did. I drove all the way to North Carolina, gave it to her, said, I'm sorry. You've been gone now for nine months. I've tried to get you back. You don't want to come back. Nope, not coming back. Okay. It, the marriage is annulled. And so then uh, one of the uh, people that was working here at the in ministry for about a year doing our landscaping, Cindy uh, and Mary were close friends. And Cindy, uh, after we dated for a while, I said, okay, I'll marry Cindy instead. I thought she was, and we had two and a half years married and uh, we can go a long story there, but she ended up leaving me, leaving me uh, and falsely accusing me of all kinds of, of, of body slamming her and stuff. That stuff's still in the court. And it, there was no body slam. I've never even yelled at her, okay? I just was, she would slap me and hurt me in, in many ways. But anyway, she left. So again, what do you do? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, if the unbelieving depart, you're not in bondage. I didn't depart. I didn't leave anybody. And so I said, what do we do? The board members said, well, Kent, she left. What do you do? You're free. File an annulment. It's over with. Because it wasn't, again, it wasn't, the, the whole license, marriage license idea started after Abraham Lincoln, after the Civil War. Why is the state involved in marriage? License comes from the word licentious. You need their permission to get married. That, it's always been a church issue for centuries, for millennia. So anyway, that's another long story. So with Cindy, we filed an annulment after trying everything to get her back and continuing to pay her the money she was supposed to be making if she had also agreement, continued to pay her. Finally, my, the trustee said, stop, stop. She's gone. She's not coming back. I said, Lord, now what do I do? I said, Lord, look, I'm not going to go fishing. I'm not going to date. I'm, you, you make one jump in the boat. If you want me to have a wife, make one jump in the boat. So I just went on preaching like I would do, you know. And then Sandra called from uh, uh, Central Florida. She said, we, my kids have been watching your videos for years. Make a long story short, I married Sandra, and boy, am I the happiest man in the world. So, right? You ended up with a Proverbs 31 wife, that's for sure. Oh, man, Proverbs 31. Yes, sir. Okay. So I know I'm not a polygamist. Why would he accuse me of that? That's, that's evil to accuse somebody of being a polygamist or adulterer. I'm not, I'm not committing adultery. Never have. Okay. Never touched a woman I wasn't married to. Never. I think those who have are disqualified from throwing stones. 
drop your rock and shut up, okay? If you weren't a virgin on your honeymoon, if you weren't faithful to your wife, if you ever had sex outside of marriage, shut up. You're not qualified to judge me, okay? I'm going to stand before God. And I think I got clean hands. Lord, I tried my best with each one. I tried my best. You can ask Sandra if I'm a good husband. He will say, I didn't know they made them like this. Yeah, so I'm fine. We're fine. Okay. <laughs> Amen. My grandpa well, said, hey, just because there's snow on the roof don't mean there ain't a fire in the furnace. Okay. <laughs> well, that's all the questions I have for you. If there's anything else you want to touch on, you're free to do so. Otherwise, we'll let you get back to probably going right back to work if I know you. No, I believe Sandra's home. I got something else in mind. But uh, <laughs> so, no, uh, I, think, uh, I think it's sad that he did that. I don't know why I can't be his judge. I'll still be his friend. He's welcome to come here. He's got seven kids, last I heard. Come visit Dinosaur Adventureland. The kids will have a blast. I think it was unnecessary to take that slap at an ally. You know, the Russians and Americans were allies during World War II, even though we differ with them on all kinds of things. We had ally because we got a bigger enemy called Hitler. I think the bigger enemy is the devil, and it's silly for him to waste ammunition shooting me. So I, I'm done. I'm, I didn't, if he wants to have another debate, I, think it'd be, I don't think I would. Uh, I'm, I'm not a polygamist. I'm only married to one woman, very happily. I've never committed to have sex outside of marriage, ever. Okay, uh, I do not go to the atheist channels for support when I want to bash somebody. Okay, like So many of them do that. Like, what, what, what think? Shouldest thou help the ungodly? I mean, read your Bible. Uh, let's see. I believe he's wrong about his teaching that Adam, the world was created to look old. Some people even teach there are fossils already in the ground. That's deceitful. That's a deceitful God to give Adam and Eve a belly button. Not part exactly. of your normal anatomy. It's a scar from where the umbilical cord was. Okay, I taught anatomy for years. I can explain all that. So I think it's wrong to say the moon had craters and God made it that way to deceive us. I think he, when he teaches the earth already had layers, I think that's wrong. The layers are from the flood of Noah. So he can teach what he wants, do what he wants in his church, and but I'm, I'm not going to fight him. And I'll, that's I'll the difference. Myself. If not, if he attacks yeah. me, I'll defend myself, okay? But yeah, I'm that's the attack. difference. You're saying, yeah. I believe I believe they came from the flood. It makes more sense that they came from the flood. You're not saying that your theory is actually hurting the, the truth, which in fact it does. But you are not at, uh, attacking him that way and uh, creating a fan base uh, that, uh, that knows that he's a Kent Hovind hater because what? He has an alternative, which is that God is deceitful. I don't understand no. it. Yep, yeah, me neither. Okay. Um, when it comes to the um, to all those stones, sir, uh, I didn't want to interrupt you because uh, it was about time um, you gave people these answers if they were in your heart, but you don't have to <clears throat> because people like me and Stephen and others that love you uh, learn the truth and understand the truth. And it is very important to not judge and get into people's shoes and understand uh, what they've been through. Because if they got out of jail for something that they didn't do and got back to a home where they were asked to rent a small room instead of the whole house and everything that happened, which they haven't researched, uh, why should we even care to give them explanations? Well, God knows everything. That's why the thing about going to jail, people say, oh, Hovind's a convicted felon. First of all, I did not commit a single crime, okay, against the government or anybody else, okay? The government broke 100 laws to put me in prison because of my teaching on video number five, The Dangers of Evolution. We did a program, was it December 13th or something? We need to write that, December 13th on our channel. What is it? Somewhere mid-December, we did a program explaining, the whole, why'd you go to jail? I explained the whole thing. The U.S. attorney spent five years trying to find something on me to put me in prison. When he finally did, he went and seized the church property in Pensacola. Then he flew to Detroit to have sex with a five-year-old, got arrested, and hung himself in jail. Google John David Roy Atchison. That's the guy who put me in prison for taking our own money out of our own bank and nothing illegal about that. So I, we covered all that on that channel. I said, oh, I, I didn't commit a crime to go to prison. Okay, They committed the crime to put me in prison. But hey... Half the Bible's written from prison, so use it. You know, use your time wisely. I tried to. All right, thank you guys.
Yeah, and Pastor, I want to just say thank you for having the courage to continue being a soul winner while you're always being under attack by atheists and now other so quote uh, so called creationists. I, yeah. I appreciate it. All right, thank you, brother. Keep up the good work. Thank you, All right. sir. All right, bye bye. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, sticking around. Um,